They came from 47 countries to take part in the largest venture of its kind ever mounted. In late 1984, His Royal Highness Prince Charles launched this research vessel, the Sir Walter Raleigh, on a global voyage. Over the next four years, she would link together 16 land-based expeditions to some of the world's most isolated regions. 4,000 young venturers between 17 and 24 years old will take part in Operation Rally. For three months, they'll be challenged by adventures that will push them to their limits. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. For many, it's their first time away from home. For all of them, it is a voyage of discovery about the world, about others, and about themselves. With some of the world's top scientists, they'll assist in comparative research studies on a global scale. They'll work on community service projects, helping the people of the countries to which they'll travel. The hundreds of projects are as varied as the people chosen to take part in Operation Rally. Meanwhile, the second patrol is preparing its journey into the uncharted south. Although they have guides to help them, each group must plan its own expedition for the month ahead. One member of this team is Craig Cohan, also from Canada. It's best to establish a base camp here and then send recce parties out to the three or four various valleys and look at them. And then just get resupplied. Um, on occasion, and then when we know how long it'll take to go through the entire, the entire length of the valley, then we'll know exactly how much supplies we'll need. The goal of this patrol is to carry out a road survey into the Castle Mountains to the south. They will search for a route that may eventually become the final extension of the Pan American Highway. Riding a herd of 30 horses, the patrol enters the lower valleys of Patagonia with apprehension. Forty years ago, pioneers moved into this region. They destroyed the forest with fires and built cabins to stake out their land. When a survey patrol finally came to chart the valley, they were turned back by gunfire. Few outsiders have come here since. As they make their way into the range beyond the devastating burnout, they face their first trial. With no trail to follow, even the guides are disoriented by the dense forest. They have to break through to the alpine clearings above. Luckily, these mountain-bred horses are accustomed to this wild terrain. The Southern Patrol is a little lost in one of the higher valleys. Their maps are the best available, but they just don't match the mountains that they're finding. The only answer is first-hand reconnaissance. While his teammates search the valleys below, Craig sets out across rugged scree with Brett Jones from California. They're heading toward a ridge that might give them a view to the south. But as the clouds descend and the snow begins to fall, there's little chance of spotting anything. Still, the mountain draws them upward. At the summit, their view is destroyed by the blizzard. But still, there's an unforgettable thrill of conquering their first peak, an unnamed mountain at the bottom of the world. Overnight, the storm has moved down onto the camp in Balboa Valley. These are nice and dry. <laughs> for Craig, it's like being home in Canada. But for the rest of the patrol, some of whom have never even seen snow before, <laughs> the threat of hypothermia is serious. In this snow, the horses won't be able to make it through the rough trails ahead. 
All stations, all stations. This is Castillo. There's major snowfall. I repeat, major snowfall. We are staying at the Balboa site until the pass is open. Over. Stranded in the hills. So chilly. Watch how the old stations approach you. The venturer uh, faced the bleak prospect of being trapped in the mountains with there? their food Over. running low and their contact with the outside world cut off. For the team in Balboa Valley, warm winds and a new radio have brought renewed spirit to the search for a southerly route. Half the team has chosen to set out on foot while the others retreat to base camp with the horses. This lonely land may never support a road but still they journey on, never knowing how far they must go or what they'll find beyond the next ridge. High in the mountains where condors with their 10-foot wingspans wheel and soar, the venturers struggle toward an uncertain goal. It's been a month of grinding work their food is almost gone. Weakened by hunger, they find their packs dragging them down. But at last, they cross a shoulder into the southern valleys. They've reached the unknown pass they came to find. Their excitement is mixed with relief and sheer exhaustion. It's finally over. In the past grueling month, Craig alone has lost 26 pounds.